our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Perry. Here. Re Councilmember Reisner. Here. Councilmember Spar. Here. Councilmember Thacker. Here. Councilmember Wilkins. Here. Councilmember Mansoor. Present. And Councilmember Jones. Present. Let the record show that all seven council members are present. Um, at this time, I will start the public hearing notice. I'll ask the clerk to read the notice. The public hearing with Tiffin City Council will be held in council chambers. Uh, 51 East Market Street on Monday, October 16th, 2023 at 7 p.m. for the consideration of Ordinance 23-68, Ordinance Responding to Petition Number 2023-04, <coughs> vacating the alley off of St. Clair Street running east and west between lots 3 and 4 of Letterhouse Subdivision and lots number 17 of Hemmings Re Resurvey in the third ward of the City of Tiffin, Ohio. At this time and place, anyone wishing to address Council may direct their questions to the council president. If you want to direct any questions or comments, please do so to me and sign in at the podium. Okay. Oh. Yeah, just on, on this subject uh, for council, um, if you look at ordinance 23-68, the, um, there's language in section two that's a little more detailed than maybe we typically include for uh, reservation of rights for easements for sewer purposes. Um, some of you um, may have been in attendance at the um, committee meeting at uh, the site of the, uh, the um, alley, and um, um, there was a lot of discussion about um, future use of the uh, alley for uh, sewer purposes. Um, there was um, a sewer will be designed uh, in that area and that we want to make sure that we retain sufficient rights to in, um, install, um, construct a sewer for uh, city purposes. So you'll see that there is a lot more detail, including that um, the property owner cannot um, construct building structures or other obstructions in that area. They'll own the property upon vacation, but they have certain limitations that they have. So I just wanted to highlight uh, that section of the ordinance. Any questions? Okay, are there any questions from the public? If there are no questions, I will close the public hearing. Uh, minutes were circulated from the last, uh, from the October 2nd regular meeting and committee of the whole. Um, are there any substitutions, deletions, amendments? Seeing none, the minutes will stand as written. Committee reports. Finance Committee, no Council Member Reisner. No report, Madam President. Law and Community Planning. No report, Madam President. Materials and Equipment. No report at this time, Madam President. Personnel and Labor Relations. No report, Madam President. Recreation and Public Property. No report, Madam President. No report for street sidewalks and sewers, economic development and downtown planning. No report, Madam President. Does anyone see the need for a committee of the whole meeting? Okay. Now we're under the reports of the officers. Her Mayor, Her Honor, Mayor Don Yanantuno. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, good evening, everyone. Just a reminder to council, we'll be holding our annual budget meeting starting with the November 6th meeting. We have it broken into three nights for three readings. They will be the 6th, the 13th at 5.30, and the 20th. It'll be almost all department heads the first <coughs> night. On the second night, it will be both Chief Pauley and Chief Chapel from Fire and Police. And then on the 20th, it will be Public Works and Engineering. So that would be the breakdown. Updates, uh, Nick, Kathy, and I have been meeting with all department heads to go over their budgets in preparation for the upcoming presentations to council. 
is a tight budget this year with revenue not increasing from last year's numbers. Plus we have agreed upon salary increases that took place this year. Nick and I attended TU's life class on Friday the 13th in regards to the program on respectful politics. It was coordinated by our own council member, Vicki Wilkins. Director of Law Brent Howard and I participated in the event as guest speakers. We have several Halloween dates to keep in mind. This Thursday, October 3rd, is downtown trick-or-treat from 4.30 to 6, and at 6.30 in parking lot 6, our Tiffin Fire Department will be hosting the first ever Great Pumpkin Drop. So hopefully everybody will be there. And hopefully the weather holds out that night, from what I understand. Uh, Destination Seneca County is hosting the Halloween Parade on Saturday, this Saturday, October 21st. It will be downtown, kicking off at 10 a.m., and Tiffin's Trick or Treat will be Sunday afternoon on October 29th from 3 to 5 p.m. And that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Oh, I do have an update, I forgot, about the bridge. The deck was poured last Tuesday, and then East Perry Street is hopefully back open the end of this week. And reminder to everyone that it's 95% paid for by ODOT, that Perry Street project. So good to point that out. And also, Officer Liz with the K-9 uh, is graduating October 27th. So we will be seeing our police dog fairly soon. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. Clerk of Council and Forest. Uh, yes, Madam President, I want to report that we have received payment from Heidelberg University for the third reading of Ordinance 23-60. Thank you. Director of Finance, Kathy Kaufman. Thank you, Madam President. I have the financial report for September 2023. Total receipts for the month were $5,115,505.20. Total expenses for the month were $3,307,883.81. The general fund unencumbered balance is $5,883,356.31. Income tax receipts for September 2023 were $994,199.09. Total annual increase in income tax collections for September 2023, comparing to September 2022, was $53,577.68. Year to date, income tax receipts are still down 0.43%. The 0.25% portion of income tax receipts that was transferred into Fund 215 for public streets for September 2023 was $122,124. The unexpended balance for all funds is $40,677,303.34, which is the same as the bank balances for the same time period. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Finance Director. Are there any questions or comments? Ken? Thank you, Madam President. I was going over the monthly report here, and I know the rest of us did. And I just want to continue to say, I want the public to know that City Council looks over these monthly reports before we okay them. And two things jumped out at me. One was on the fund report, page one of two, it had the DARE program is carrying a balance of $16,405. And I haven't heard much about the DARE program, but if the DARE program is not active, why isn't this 16405 moved into something else. Director. So the, the DARE program, I, I did talk to Police Chief Polly a little bit today, and he just doesn't have the staffing to be doing the DARE program right now. He hopes to be doing it eventually. But the funds in that fund, it's a special fund, and those funds can only be used for DARE programs. So we can't move it anyplace else to use for something else. It has to stay right there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That was... Two. And if I can add, so the, probably that's funding from past programs as well. So it's not like we've appropriated <laughs> more funds into those. It's just we've been carrying that balance over. And if you look on there, there have been no expenses that came out of that right. this okay. year. And item two, if I could. Go ahead, Ken. Under <clears throat> case checks, the one dated August 31st, 23, we paid outside lawyer fees of $3,840. We have some of the best legal staff here at City Council. I'm just curious what an additional 3840 would be used for. Go ahead, Finance Director. So it, it wasn't actually lawyer fees. It was an, a facade grant to a law office. So I believe it was on Court Street. 
So they paid for a, oh, they wanted a facade okay. grant for their building. Okay, thank you. Cause... Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Reisner. Um, motion to approve the finance director's uh, report uh, for the month ending September 30th. There's a motion on the floor. Councilmember uh, Monsoor. I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Seven to zero. Um, Director of Law, Brent T. Howard. No report, Madam President. Thank you. We're now under written communications. I'll ask the clerk to read written communications. We have mayor's request for legislation, number 23-41, appointment to Tiffin Municipal Courts, I'm sorry, Municipal Arts Commission of Rob Lemjewich. Mayor's request for legislation 23-41 will be assigned to the Personnel and Labor Relations Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-42, legislation to enter into local public agency federal local let project agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation. <clears throat> Mayor's request for legislation 23-42 will be assigned to the Street Sidewalk Sewers Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-43, legislation to authorize and direct the city administrator to enter into an agreement with a professional design firm <coughs> for preparation of the preliminary engineering and design for the Sen uh, State Route 53 9.8 recon and resurfacing project PID 120415 and associated safety project. Mayor's request for legislation 23-43 will be assigned to the Street Sidewalk Sewers Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-44, legislation to authorize the mayor to accept easement from current property owner at 1150 Mall Road for storm sewer purposes. Mayor's request for legislation 23-44 will be assigned to the Street Sidewalk Sewers Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-45, legislation to authorize city administrator to enter into an agreement with design firm and authorize the mayor to sign project agreement with Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, for the US 224 Urban Paving Project. Mayor's request for legislation 23-45 will be assigned to the Street Sidewalk Sewers Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-46, legislation to authorize city administrator to prepare and oversee documents for the 2024 pavement repair program. Mayor's request for legislation 23-46 is assigned to the Street Sidewalk Sewers Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-47, legislation to authorize the mayor to sign an LPA federal local let project agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, for SEN SR 53 9.8 recon and resurfacing project PID 120415. Mayor's request for legislation 23-47 will be assigned to the Street Sidewalk Sewers Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-48, legislation to authorize city administrator to enter into agreement with design firm for preliminary plans for the replacement of culvert on South Sandusky Street. Mayor's request for legislation 23-48 is assigned to the Street Sidewalk Sewers Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-49, Legislation authorizing city administrator to enter into an agreement with design firm for the preparation of a safety study for the West Market Street corridor between US 224 and Hopewell Avenue. Mayor's request for legislation 23-49 is assigned to the Street Sidewalk Sewers Committee. Finance Director's request for legislation number F23-34 to amend the 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate funds into the Finance and Fire Department department budgets. Finance Director's request for legislation F23-34 has been prepared for tonight's meeting as Ordinance 23-70. Finance Director's request for legislation number F23-35 to amend the 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate funds into the Finance Department budget. Finance Director's request for legislation F23-35 has been prepared for tonight's meeting as Ordinance 23-71. And then from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, we have a notice of change of corporate <laughs> stock ownership for Napoli Pizza Incorporated from Gerald C. Elkert to Michael W. Schock. Um, this will also be assigned to the Street Sidewalk Sewers Committee. And that concludes the written communications.
Thank you. We're now under oral communications. Anyone wishing to uh, address council may step up to the podium, sign in, and direct their questions to me. Good evening. I have questions <coughs> late, I guess, but on the Heidelberg wanting to do their field house, I guess as it's called, and the vacating areas down Walker Street and alleys back there. Um, from when I last talked to you, can I call you Cheyenne or sure? Yeah, that's fine. Um, have you gotten any more recent info from what you... Uh, not from what I have given. Law Director, do you have anything to add from the? We had conversed through email, um, so I, maybe I'll start by that. Yeah, I, I um, had uh, was copied on the email that you received from uh, Council Member Thacker, and she was accurate in um, answering the question you had about the use of the, the road, uh, the street, and the alleys. Um, until the the new road is constructed, <clears throat> I think that was your question. Well, I was just I didn't know just till she sent me the map what all they were asking to be vacated, and so because I live up a bit on Walker Street, and I tend to think, oh, the traffic. So a question would be: Is Heidelberg? going to have to only have access off of Main Street because Walker Street's just a really nice residential street. We shouldn't have to have traffic coming in and out from the field house. I will ask you to state your name. I'm so sorry. I know oh. you, but I <laughs> forgot to ask you to introduce yourself to everybody else. Carol Kaufman. Thank you. I, I don't have specific answers to that. I mean, just like any other person. Go ahead, Nick. If I may. Um, so based on the plans that, that Heidelberg had prepared um, for this, I would assume that most of the traffic will probably be coming off of Main Street, just based on the way the traffic flow um, was kind of created into that plan. Um, I know we have representatives from Heidelberg. They don't necessarily need to speak on that unless unless they feel comfortable with it. Um, but the, largely the plan looks to be that, that most of that traffic will be coming straight from Main Street and then back onto Main Street, um, just based on the way that, again, those traffic patterns were kind of created. Um, it'll be a, not completely closed off, um, but certainly uh, the they expect that most of the traffic will be there. Um, you have smaller streets there. I know there's some on-street parking, but I, I wouldn't expect that. Um, they, they don't have it set up so that your on-street parking is necessarily what they're taking up. It's the, the areas, they have parking areas that are going to be built into this, into this plan. As long as that holds enough, I keep noticing you're using that operative word, most of the traffic. That's well, where it's like, I'd like to see Heidelberg restricted into no access to it at all off of Walker Street. Unfortunately, unless you would close the street, which you wouldn't like that to probably happen That's either. That's essentially, I'm sorry, <laughs> isn't that essentially what they're asking to do at a certain point? I'm sorry, I I'm, I'm, must not be understanding. So the long-term plan will be that, that Walker Street will have another outlet onto it. What, what is now an alley will be expanded into, yeah. into another, another exit off of, off of Walker. Yeah, no, my question is, is will there be access into this field house complex or whatever it is through Walker Street? So I'm not questioning people on Walker Street being able to cut through to Maine, uh, traffic to and from the field house, I'd rather not see on Walker Street. So I'm saying that that complex should be limited if Tiffin can do that, where the only entrance and exit to that is off of Main Street. It is a bigger, more major street. Granted, it's residential too, but it's not quite the quiet 
residential because there is just a lot more traffic. Sure, and, and I'll apologize. I don't have the plan in front of me, so I can't speak exactly to yeah. that. Um, it may be something else to, uh, you know, not that we don't want to uh, get into specifics here. Um, there is a, uh, we do have a traffic safety committee um, that talks about these kinds of issues. Um, we have had conversations about this, about what their plan is. That might be a more appropriate meeting um, because we have the police fire chief, um, our city engineer, at those. Um, however, I don't know if, if Law Director Howard has any more comments. Or I, was, I was going to see if um, potentially, Rod, if you have anything that you'd like to add and maybe sign in and if you, if you are willing to address some of these concerns. <coughs> Uh, yes, Rod Morrison from Heidelberg University. Um, I'm happy to try to address your concern. I, I would have to say that, to echo what uh, Nick just reported, most of the traffic, and I know most is your concern, but uh, the, the vast majority of the traffic would be entering and exiting it from Main Street, simply because that is the entrance into the parking areas and into the front entrance of the building. So I cannot promise you that no one will use Walker Street coming from um, uh, circular or hedges. Um, coming, uh, you know, east to the field house, but it would be inconvenient because most people coming to the university would come down Main Street, either from the west or around from Prospect Street, and then into the Main Street, off the Main Street entrance into the field house property. That's how it is designed to function. So I can't tell you that no one will use Walker Street. Surely someone will, but it should not be a, a large number of, of people using that street. Wouldn't be convenient. Like I said, it's a much smaller street. It is. And sometimes two-way traffic sure. because parking is allowed on one side. Sure. It's like, okay, you wait, you go. Now you I, understand. Go. I understand. And I, I, you know, again, can't promise, but I don't think it will be a major issue. Helpful. Okay, thank you both. Is there anybody else who would like to speak and address council under oral communications? <laughs> Do I have to sign in? Yes. All right. Judge Rhonda Vest, I'm just here to let you know how things have been going with the municipal court. So since I took over last December, um, we've instituted quite a few new programs. I'm sure council's aware we obtained a grant. We're working on getting that finalized to spend that money to upgrade the probation system. We've also gotten involved with Pivot Drug Recovery Court again, and it is back in municipal court every Thursday for the first time since 2020. I am presiding over it for the rest of the year every Thursday. Mayor Dawn and Liz got to come one week. I'd invite everyone on council to come watch that. It's definitely a different experience than what court typically looks like. So we're really proud of the work that we're doing in there. I referred several people, probably I think over 30 at this point this year. Um, there have been several of them admitted. Uh, I think the last count I got was simply municipal court alone. It was 13, but there's some that are also municipal court plus common pleas. They have cases in both courts. So we're well over about, I think about a dozen and a half of people that, at this point um, for that aspect. So along with that, I've also instituted some driving under suspension docket uh, matters so pe folks can come in and work on their driving issues. People that have 19, 20 different open suspensions, they don't know where to start. We've been working on them. I'm working one-on-one, -on -one, meeting with folks myself and going through their driving records and working on what they can do to get those cleaned up so we can have more valid drivers on the streets in both Tiffin and Foster and all of Seneca County. So I've been working on all of that. I've also been referring people to help with downtown cleanup. We had a great time with a group there not that long ago. I hope to see that expand and keep doing that. And just, I've been out and about involved in the community a lot more than probably what you've previously seen. Um, Specifically, I've been involved with some public groups, Women Empowering Women is a very good program that I've been making sure I get to every month. It means a lot for some of the women that come into court to be able to sit down and talk to me on a personal level, and I've been trying to make that part of my mission as your judge. So I'd like to continue doing that, and I think you know I'm on the ballot, but that's not the only reason I'm here. 
Wanted to see everybody, let you know what we've been doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ken? I think got a question for Judge. I get, to ask, I get to answer questions, sorry. <laughs> what time is Pivot on Thursday? Okay, so do you mind stepping up? Start? Do you mind stepping up to the podium just so that people can Recording. I'll get some more steps in. <laughs> All right, so on Thursday, typically, so we have treatment team meeting at 9 a.m., so that's not open to the public. Me, the men meet in the morning. We usually try to start around 10, 15, but a lot of times it goes a little bit over in the meeting, so about 10, 30 is probably a safe bet. And then the women meet at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But right, like I said, it's on the second floor for the rest of the year. Okay? Thank you. Anything else? Kevin? Uh, do you have any info? I know we talked informally. You want to talk about the golf carts? Yeah. You, you I know. know. I, just, just. I have seen no tickets about golf okay. carts. Good. But that doesn't mean they didn't pay a waiver. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with the numbers that we processed through municipal court. Yeah. But just in the first eight months of the year, we've processed, you know, well over 4,000 cases. <laughs> so the bulk of those are going to be waivers or traffic tickets, things like that. So if someone gets a ticket with a golf cart and they pay the waiver, I won't see that. Okay. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay, anything else? Anytime you want to come in and sit through court, you're welcome. It's open to the public. Thank you. Can I just, uh, it's Mary distinctly Dawson. different if you do attend. It's distinctly different between the men in court and the women in court. It was, it was an eye-opening experience both okay. times, and I really appreciated them bearing their souls to us, basically. It's, um, it's a very humbling experience for them and for myself watching them and listening to them. And so it's, it's a good program to sit on and watch if you get a chance. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public who would like to address council under oral communications? Seeing none, we are now under resolutions and ordinances. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I skipped over motions. Are there any motions? Okay, seeing none, we are under resolutions and ordinances. Clerk, will you please read the resolutions? Resolution number 23-29, introduced by Vicki Wilkins. Resolution supporting the abrogation of deed restrictions on the city property known as the Louisa K. Fast Park and declaring an emergency. This is the second reading of resolution 23-29. Ordinance number 23-60, introduced by Cheyenne Thacker. Ordinance responding to petitions number 20-2301, 20-2302, and 202303, vacating a portion of Walker Street and adjacent and nearby alleys in the first and fourth wards of the city of Tiffin, Ohio. This is the third reading of Ordinance 23-60. Dan? Oh, yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, pass Ordinance 23-60. There is a motion to pass Ordinance 23-60. A second. A second by Monsoor. Is there any discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Perry? Yes. Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. And Mansoor? Yes. The motion passes 7 to 0. Ordinance 23-65. Ordinance number 23-65, introduced by Kevin Reesner. Ordinance amending 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate $2,000 into the Parks Department <clears throat> budget for land appraisal of the Louisa K. Fast Park property. This is the second reading of Ordinance 23-65. Ordinance number 23-67, introduced by Chris Mansour. Ordinance amending Chapter 707 of Tiffin Codified Ordinances, removing the fees for a distressed merchandise sales license. This is the second reading of Ordinance 23-67. Ordinance number 23-68, introduced by Cheyenne Thacker. Ordinance responding to petition number 2023-04, <clears throat> Vacating the alley off of St. Clair Street, running east and west between lots number three and four of Letterhouse Subdivision and lot number 17 of Hemmings Resurvey in the third ward of the city of Tiffin, Ohio. This is the second reading of Ordinance 23-68. Ordinance number 23-70. 
introduced by Kevin Reisner, ordinance amending 2023 budget ordinance 22-108 to appropriate a total of $100,000 into the fire department and finance budgets to cover insurance expenses for the rest of the year and any income tax refunds. This is the first reading of ordinance 23-70. Councilmember Reisner. I move for passage of ordinance 23-70, uh, suspending city council's three reading rule. There is a motion to pass ordinance 23-70, suspending council's three reading rule. Uh, yes, council member Spar. I will second that motion. There's a motion and a second. Um, first we'll vote on the, I'm sorry, is there any discussion? Ken. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> We talked in the committee the whole, the reason for suspending the three reading rule, et cetera. And I don't think that was televised. I could be wrong, but had a very good explanation in the committee of the whole. It'd be nice to hear that same reason for the public's benefit. Yeah. And mine, since this is new first reading and I just saw it yesterday, so. Uh, yes, finance director. Yes, yeah, so for this ordinance, uh, we are asking to put $30,000 in the finance department budget, and that is for any income tax refunds that might come in between now and the end of the year. We're almost at our total budget spent for the year, so just in case something comes in that we need to refund before the next year, we want to make sure we have a little bit more funds in there. We may not need to use them, but this is just in case. And then for the fire department, $70,000 for personal services or health insurance, dental insurance. And these are things that are really hard to budget for. And in this case, they had at least seven to eight changes in the health insurance, dental and vision insurances after the budget was set. So unfortunately, those were items where maybe employees went to family coverage, things like that. So that increased the cost. Councilor Reisner. I'm, I'm curious, too, of why these were bundled together under one ordinance where they could have been maybe separated. The only reason was to just cut down in the, the number of ordinances that we're doing at the end of the year. And actually, the one that is next could have been put together with the other finance one, but I didn't know about that one gotcha. <laughs> until later. All right. Thanks. Okay. Is there any further discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the suspension first. Councilmember Perry? Yes. Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. And Mansour? Yes. The, suspen the suspension passes with the vote of 7 to 0. I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on the passage of Ordinance 23 70. Councilmember Perry? Yes. Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. And Mansour? Yes. Ordinance 23 70 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Ordinance number 23-71, introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance amending 2023 budget ordinance 22-108 to appropriate $5,000 into the finance department budget to cover fees for third-party administration for ambulance billing. This is the first reading of ordinance 23-71. Councilmember Reisner. I move for passage of, uh, immediate passage of ordinance 23-71, <coughs> suspending city council's three reading rule. Councilmember Mansour. I'll second. There is a motion and a second to pass Ordinance 23 71, suspending Council's three reading roll. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Madam President. Again, similar to 2370, 2371 is first reading. It's new to me, new to a lot of us on City Council. Uh, we had a very good explanation in the committee of the whole meeting. I don't think the public was privy to that, and I didn't memorize what the reasoning was, but I'd like to have that repeated. Finance Director. So in this instance, this is putting $5,000 into the finance department budget. Um, this section of the budget pays for our third party ambulance billing service that we have. And um, this company charges us based on what our revenues are from those uh, ambulance um, collections and the revenue is up, so we are actually needing to pay them more since our revenues are higher. And then also out of that same line, we also have um, several court cases we would like to take to small claims, and those fees also have increased. So these are just um, due to cost increases in this area. Thank you. 
Councilmember Jones. And a follow up on that explanation. <clears throat> Finance Director, third party administrator for ambulance billing, don't we have the administrative capabilities doing ourselves versus paying a outside firm? We really I'm not don't. sure what this is, but it yeah, we really don't. We we would probably have to hire another employee to take that on. So oh, we were okay. having a third party do that. Okay, forget that then. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the suspension. Councilmember Perry. Yes. Reisner. Yes. Spar. Yes. Thacker. Yes. Wilkins. Yes. Jones. Yes. And Mansoor. Yes. The suspension passes with the vote of seven to zero. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the passage of ordinance 23-71. Councilmember Perry? Yes. Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. And Mansour? Yes. Ordinance 23-71 passes with a vote of seven to zero. That concludes the written or the legislation. We are now under other business. Um, I'd like to first start by announcing a streets, sidewalks, sewers committee meeting um, for October 30th at 5.45 p.m. to discuss the following mayor's request for legislation. 23-42, 23 23-44, 23-45, 23-46, 23-47, 23-48, 23-49, and any other business that comes before that committee. And I would also like to ask the members of that committee if we would like to send a response to ask for a hearing for the notice of change of corporate stock ownership for Napoli Pizza Inc. to Ohio Division of Liquor Control. No, no, no. Okay, no. well then we will have the clerk send that. Any other business? Dan? Uh, unless anybody else from the Personnel and Labor Relations objects, um, I will not be uh, asking for a meeting to discuss uh, Rob Lebdrich to the Arts Commission. He'd be a great addition. And I think he's already on, I think. Is he not on? He's on tape. He'd still be. He's, he's great for that. So unless uh, somebody feels strongly that they would like a meeting, I, I don't. I'm not going to ask for one. Nope. So in turn, go ahead, Law Director. Yes, so that means that uh, you direct me to prepare the resolution yeah. for the next meeting. Yeah, correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Law Director. <laughs> yeah, just said. do your thing. Are there any other business? Uh, uh, Mayor Don? On a lighter note, I have not overcome with the emotion here tonight. It's just the blowers drive my eyes crazy. It makes <laughs> them water. And I've been sitting there going like this for quite a while. So not, not overcome with the emotion tonight. Uh, Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> We're going to street sidewalk sewer committee is going to meet at 5:45 on the 30th of October. I hear that and understand that. And we're going to talk about Mayor's request legislation 2344, something about 1150 Mall Road. I took it upon myself yesterday to drive down Mall Road. The even numbers are on the east side of Mall Road. And I could not find 1150. The odd numbers where the factories are, I would guess, are odd numbers. So could someone pinpoint where 1150 Mall Road is so I could see it and breathe it before our meeting on the 30th? And the auditor's website was no help, so. Yeah, if I could, I, I believe that um, that property is uh, the um, spec building property um, because it is being developed and has a, um, a detention pond for storm sewer um, purposes. And with that, they need, they sign an agreement uh, as part of the uh, Tiffin Code. And we have certain rights that we request. And we, so we get an easement to make sure that that is properly inspected and maintained. So that's, that's the property uh, that I believe that this applies to. I, I don't know of any other improvements going on in that area in Eagle Rock Business Park. I don't know exactly that that's the address of it, but okay. I, I assume that that is correct. So it is just if you turn from Tiber, turn right north on Mall Road, right. and you go past uh, the corner properties being developed, the next one is the spec building property that um, uh, was sold uh, during the summertime. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Law Director. Any other business? 
Uh, Councilmember Perry. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. I've had a few people reach out to me about um, their property value or their homes going uh, higher from the appraisal process. Uh, and I will admit, I don't really know the, how the process works or how it happened. You know, if Tiffin has anything to do with it, I think it's more of a Seneca County thing, um, uh, which I explained, but I also said I would ask about it. Uh, if I can give a better explanation on why or how they can appeal it if they wanted to. Um, I don't know if anyone had any information. Councilmember Spar. I do have a little bit of information on that, just personally, because I had the same interest in it. Um, I guess every couple of years, three years, I think. I thought it was 10 years, but I heard it was three years. Every three years they go, re go around, they hire somebody to come out and do reviews of your property values and they're expecting those property values to go up considerably here in this next year. So if you get that notification or check and see that your property values have gone up, which is good if you're going to sell your property, but bad for your property taxes, your uh, et cetera, uh, could be bad. Um, you do have the option of an appeal. All you have to do is call up to the auditor's office and ask to review your property uh, values with them and they'll sit down and, and review them individually and make sure that they've got them correct. That's the extent of, of what I understand that you can do about that. Okay. So you can pass that on. And that is anybody can call up there okay. and they'll make an appointment. <clears throat> if I may add, if you're interested to see what uh, any changes in your real estate taxes would be, you can also go to the auditor's website. They have a, an estimated calculator of, of that, that you can view for your property. Okay. okay. Any other business? But you are correct. It is a county. It's not Tiffin. Right. It's Tiffin, Tiffin did. So I just. Mm -hmm. no, I, we, I, don't, we don't benefit that much from it. So. Yeah. Right. Anybody else? Okay, we are adjourned at 7.42. No, it's 8.45. <laughs> uh, so this is the last of the quick yeah. meetings for a while. Is that yeah. what we're expecting? Yeah. 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 I was we're just thinking. Get yeah. ready. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're having a great yeah, time here. Break <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.